Now that we have a function for drawing a traffic light as an image, as well as a function that turns each traffic light into its next traffic light, let's combine these two functions into an animation for a simple traffic light. We're going to use not the animate operation that you've seen before, but a more powerful and more general operation called Big Bang. Big Bang is like animate, but more general. In animate, remember what happens is we have a sequence of successive numbers starting with zero, and we give each of these numbers to the drawing function to turn it into an image. And we see the sequence of successive images that come out of this function. Big Bang is like that, except we don't have to use numbers. We could use other things, and in this animation, it is convenient to use a traffic light. Whatever we use is called a world. So a Big Bang animation needs two functions. One to tell us how to draw a world as an image, and secondly to tell us how to turn each world into its next world. So the most important thing about using Big Bang is we have to decide what a world is. Right now, a world is going to be a traffic light. And that means that the drawTL function that I wrote before is not just a function that takes a traffic light as input, it's also a function that takes a world as input and returns an image. Similarly, the next TL function that you wrote could take a world and return a world because right now a world is just a traffic light. Here's how to use Big Bang. The first input we give to Big Bang is the initial world. If worlds were numbers, this might be zero, but worlds are not numbers now, worlds are traffic lights. So when we turn on a traffic light, what color should it be? A safe color will be red. Next, we have to say how to draw a traffic light. And in Big Bang, we specify that by putting the word to draw and the name of the function draw tl together inside square brackets. You can also use round parentheses, but here I like to use square brackets to emphasize that that is sort of a case of the Big Bang. The second case of a Big Bang is about what happens when time passes and we need to advance the traffic light to the next one. So that case is called on tick. And then we have to say next TL for this is a function that will turn each world into the next world at every tick of the clock. So now we can close the Big Bang and we're ready to try this out. Ah, we need to get this Big Bang function from the universe library. Let's try again. Well, that's an animation all right. It's a little bit too fast because there are 28 ticks per second by default. But in Big Bang, we can change the speed of ticks. We could change it to, let's say, two seconds per tick so that only every two seconds will the traffic light change. That's better. Every two seconds, the traffic light changes to the next one. Okay, Big Bang is really powerful. It can be used not only to build animations, but also to build interactive applications. And we're going to be doing a lot of that in this class involving not just time passing, but also keyboard pressing and also mouse clicking. For example, instead of advancing the traffic light every two seconds, let's build a different Big Bang application that advances the traffic light every time we press a key, any key. In order to build this application, we need to design a new function. Um, let's call it key TL. What's important about this function is its signature. It has to have this signature. It has to take a world 
and what's called a key event as two inputs and return a new world. The idea is that this function is going to be called by Big Bang anytime someone presses a key. And it's going to be told what the current world is and what key was pressed. And then it's going to return the new world, the next world that the world becomes after the key press is handled. OK, so this is going to be handle any key by advancing the traffic light. So in this very simple application, we're not even going to care what key it is. As long as the key, we're going to advance the traffic light. And the header of this function needs to assign names to two inputs. The first input is a world. It's also a traffic light because after all, we are deciding for the moment that a world is a traffic light. So I'm still going to call it TL for short. The second input is a key event. I'm going to call it KE for short. Okay. Let's write some examples. The examples for this function should use inputs that this function could get. So we have to make up some world and make up some key events. One world might be red. That's a world because it's a traffic light. Key events are actually strings. And most of the time, they are just the string containing the letter that you press. So for example, someone might press the letter J, and that will be a key event when we put it in a string. So now to finish this example, we have to ask if currently the traffic light is red and someone presses J, what should the traffic light become? Well, red should become green. So that's our first example. We could write more examples because there are so many different traffic lights and even more keys. But really, all these are the same idea because we're not really going to distinguish between different keys. And also, no matter what the current traffic light is, we're always going to advance to the next one. And we already have a function for doing that. So for example, if the current light is yellow and someone presses a different key like M, we're still going to go to red. What about the template for this function? That's step four of the design recipe. Well, we can start with the header. And now, the least we can do is to remind ourselves that we might want to use these inputs. We could say, look, the traffic light is an enumeration, so we should consider the three cases differently of a traffic light. But actually, we could consider them all the same because we could use the next TL function that we already have to deal with the three different cases of advancing the traffic light. We could say, look, a key event is actually also an enumeration. It's a very long enumeration because there are so many keys on the keyboard. But again, we're not going to deal with the keys differently. So this is actually a fine template as is. We just need to remind ourselves to use the two inputs. And now we could turn this template into a definition. Our goal is to get a world out of this function. So whatever we do should be the next traffic light, which is a world, a traffic light. And we could get that by using the next TL function. And all we need to pass that function is a current traffic light. We don't need to care about the key event. The key event input KE is not used by this function because we don't care what KE is. That's fine. So now we're ready to test this function. Before I test this function, let me first comment out this Big Bang because we don't really need to test the Big Bang at the same time. OK, all the tests pass. So now let's use this function in the Big Bang. This Big Bang is going to be a little different. It's going to draw the traffic light the same way. But we're going to tell the Big Bang whenever someone presses a key, don't just ignore the key. Use the new function key TL to handle the key. We're going to say whenever a key event happens, the handler to use is the function key TL. So that's a new case in the Big Bang. Let's try that. Great. It is not advancing the traffic light 
every two seconds. Instead, whenever I press a key, any key, it's going to advance the traffic light. Okay. So you can see that we have used two handlers in this class so far. We can use an untick handler if we want something to happen every once in a while, like every two seconds. And we can use the unkey handler if we want something to happen whenever someone presses a key. And these handlers could be combined. So if I want the traffic light to advance every two seconds, plus also advance when someone presses a key, I could just put untick here. And now we have an animation that is somewhat keyboard controlled as well. So every two seconds, it's advancing. But if I wanted to go faster, I could press a key. OK. We're going to see more kinds of handlers in this class. I think the next kind we're going to see is an unmouse handler. And that's going to allow us to handle clicking and dragging and moving of the mouse.